Hello and welcome on the Daily Driven Classics channel. In today's video, I list up most of the things that can cause a crank nose start on M51 and M41 engines. So, if you have a 325, 425, 318 TD or TDS, these are probably the causes to why it's cranking but not starting. The M51 engines are kind of picky and they can be a bit uh, frustrating to work on because they won't cooperate. But as you could see by my latest short, the E34, it finally runs. Yep, we can finally drive. The diagnostic process for a crank no start as we had it uh, on older diesels is pretty similar just because they mostly share the pump injection. And um, old diesels pretty much just need air supply, compression and fuel diesel to start and or run. So the easiest thing is to check air supply and the main areas of the air supply don't just include the supply, there can also be too much back pressure. So pretty much the simplest step you can do is have one to crank the car and then you check at the tailpipe if there is air coming out because if there's no air coming out you could have a blocked exhaust and the back pressure in the exhaust is flooding the chambers from the exhaust valves and then you don't have enough oxygen or air in the burning chambers to have a proper combustion and that could cause a no start even. I haven't really seen it but theoretically that's possible. The second thing is check your turbo or air filter housing. For example if you replace the air filter and you had a shop towel and that just fell down here then you would have uh, sucked that into the turbo inlet side and that could choke off the engine's air supply. That could be a possible cause of a crank no start. If you want to, you can just take off the turbo uh, boost pipe or the silicone coupler here and then just check if there's air coming through or not, uh, if there's anything visible. Maybe if you have uh, had a car that's standing outside for longer and there uh, was a rat's nest that went through the silicone coupler on the turbo and whatever, even though all these sound kind of basic and dumb, they could be a real crank no start cause. But yeah, let's now move on to the other things that are also possible. Another area why your older diesel engine might not start is no compression. Um, for me, I regrinded the valve seats so I know that is properly sealed because they all sealed quite nicely when I checked them and uh, it started so I don't think during the rebuild I messed up the piston rings and lost compression but that could be a possible cause. If you want to be sure you have to buy one of these. A compression tester kit. I used this one on the E46 and on the Golf 2 already. They all had uh, quite good of a compression but I couldn't fit it onto the M51 engine just because the injector thread was different to what the kit had. You can also buy a compression tester that is not linked to any threads and it just has a silicone bung that you can press down onto the injector hole and then it automatically seals. That would probably be the most universally uh, applicable injection tester and probably the best one for the job. But uh, that could also be an area why it won't start. Another area that is vital to a startup on an older diesel is glow plugs. I changed all six glow plugs in one of the first episodes, all six of them, and that's why I know that these are good. If you're not sure, you can check the fusible link in this box, and I'm gonna show you in an instant. But first, I want to explain why the older diesels absolutely need their glow plugs and the newer ones don't necessarily do. On newer engines, you have uh, a different type of injector that vaporizes the diesel a lot more efficient. And if you have a diesel mixture that is a lot more vaporized, it is easier to start the combustion. So you need less compression and less heat to start it. If you have uh, a modern diesel and there's one glow plug defect, it's gonna start a quarter of the turn. We've had that on the Golf right there, the new one, it's a 2.0 TDI, and it started up without two glow plugs because two were defective and uh, it started up really easy within one turn or so 
but on the older engines if you've seen the cold starts that are just like the guy is cranking his engine for two minutes straight and then it just starts is the glow plugs are defect because on the older engines the diesel mixture with the air is not as finely atomized as in newer engines and therefore it is harder to start the actual combustion itself you need the extra heat from the glow plugs on older engines otherwise it won't start glow plugs absolutely one of the most probable causes for no start if you want to check the fusible link i'm going to show you right now when i tried checking the glow plugs i was really confused because there is the fuse box however the fusible link for the glow plugs is sitting right here under this cover is the relay and the fuse for the glow plugs themselves. I don't know why BMW put it here and not on the other side because the other side is supposed to be the fuse box. To take this out it's very easy. Just take out two screws. Well, there's supposed to be four but mine only has two left. <laughs> Next up, if your car is manual, you pull away these wires because I believe that is for the automatic transmission. And right between these two computers there is the fusible link I was talking about. This little thing right there. I sanded off both of these screws and the fusible link itself because I wanted to be sure that there is good connection. If yours is broken through and you replace it and then it burns through instantly after, that's probably because there's an issue with the glow plug system itself. And now we're going to get to the last main reasons why your M51 or M41 is not starting. Fuel delivery. If I would have a crank no start again, I would probably start checking the fuel filter and the fuel filter line that goes to the injection pump itself. Don't mind the vacuum line, I still need to take off the whole intake manifold to change out one last injector. This is a see-through hose and you can just check if there is air in there. If there's any large amount of air bubbles or if there's only air, you probably have a failure before this point, so with the fuel filter, the fuel filter lines, or the actual pump itself. The way I did it to exclude this as an issue, first I changed the filter itself, so I know there's not going to be too much back pressure. Then I pressed down on this clip and soaked the plastic tab right here in uh, creeping oil. Then you just take it out and you wiggle it because this is a plastic part and it's no longer available from BMW and as far as I'm concerned there's no real replacement alternatives um, yeah and then you check if you turn the key into ignition position number one the pump in the fuel tank itself should turn and push fuel right right through here if you have no fuel coming through here then either your filter is blocked or the in-tank pump is no longer working I would first check that and even if you have no fuel delivery from here your car should still run because on earlier M21 powered cars they didn't even have an in-tank pump so it has to work either way because but yeah I would check that that could cause a long crank and slow start but it should still run since you don't want air in your whole fuel delivery system you also need to make sure that there is no air in the injector lines going from the injection pump to the injectors themselves. The way you check that or the way you bleed them is you just have someone crank the car and you loosen them half a turn before you start cranking. And then when you crank, diesel starts shooting out of here, out of the overthrow nuts and then you just tighten them one by one. Whichever starts first, you start tightening first. And that's basically how you air out or bleed the injectors on these overthrow nuts. The reason why I still need to take out the manifold again is because the machine shop also gloriously destroyed injector number 4, lead injector on the M51. As you can see I had to crimp them back together and I tested it with a multimeter and it read 100 ohms resistance so it should be fine. I'm just going to replace it preliminary just to be sure that this is not uh, a reason why my car runs a bit rough right now because we managed to get it started with the thing I'm going to discuss next but it still runs rough from time to time but that could just be because we took apart the whole engine and there uh, might be some residues left to burn off or whatever 
but I'm just going to replace that in the next episode. I ordered it two weeks ago, it still hasn't arrived because of the massive uh, snowstorms in Germany. Uh, I think the parts delivery service just uh, was unable to get their workers there on time, but whatever, I'm just going to keep waiting. And now on to one of the last reasons, the injection pump itself. On M51 engines or any car powered by the Bosch VE pump, the pump itself can fail quite a lot. and. Uh, from forums, most of the times when your car doesn't start and your pump is leaky, it is the actual pump that is no longer working. So just take off the beauty covers right here with the T-shape and then just manually inspect the fuel pump from the top, from the sides, pretty much everywhere. And yeah, if your pump is really leaky, that could be the reason why your car is starting bad in warm or cold conditions. It could be the reason why your car is not starting at all and could just be the reason why your car is starting slowly. These pumps are notoriously getting bad and uh, you can rebuild them yourself by buying a cheap uh, kit with uh, all new seals that costs about 15 bucks but there's quite a lot of labor involved. And another thing you have to check on the pump itself is the pump timing. That was the case for me and how rich or lean the fuel mixture being injected really is. That was also a thing that was wrong. The way you regulate the mixture of this pump is there is one bolt right here, one under the EJR bolt and one right there. There's three T-star bolts and you need to loosen them. Then you can take some piece of wood and just chuck it in from here or here. If you push it in this direction you're going to make the mixture leaner, that means there's less fuel being injected. If you push it to the back of the engine, that means you're getting it richer, so there's more fuel being injected. For me, it was slightly too lean and wouldn't really run, so I had to make it richer, so push it via the back of the engine. Another thing that was wrong on my engine was the injection timing itself. I adjusted the pump after the partial engine rebuild, manually just via the eye and so it wasn't really the right moment then i had to go ahead and buy a dial gauge and the way you do it is you start approximately 90 degrees before top dead center on cylinder number one you rotate the engine with the dial gauge injected into the middle slot on the injection pump itself when you find the place where it bottoms out and then it goes back up you have to zero the gauge out and then you turn the engine to top dead center on cylinder number one. Uh, when you arrive at top dead center, you lock the engine in place with a cam locker, and then you have to adjust it to 0.95 millimeters lift, plus or minus uh, 0.03 millimeters tolerance. So, everything I've just stated, these are the main causes of a crank no start on these engines. Um, if you think that I've said anything wrong, or there's something factually wrong with what I explained, just leave it down in the comments and we can discuss it. Uh, if you have anything to add to the list of probable causes, also leave it down and I will pin it, because there's just not enough M51 content on YouTube, and I would like to help people out. Since I'm still waiting on parts, there's not much left to do in this episode. I'm sorry if the content is a bit boring right now, but I'm waiting on parts and so I can't do anything. But uh, yeah, next thing we're going to do is detail the engine bay because everything apart from the engine is still disgusting. And we're also going to repaint the beauty covers because these are properly scratched up. Going to sand them down, repaint them in a nice beautiful gloss black. And after that the engine bay will look perfect after we're done. As you could just see, I was really careful with how much water I was spraying. If you were to do an engine bay detail on a more modern car, I wouldn't be nearly as careful as in this one, because the newer cars have a lot more splash protection, a lot more seals than these old ones. If you have a 1950s or 1960s car, on the other hand, uh, I wouldn't worry at all. I could just pressure wash it because there's pretty much no electronics. But on this one, there is a lot of non-protected electronics and I don't want to fry these so we're just going to rinse it off 
and uh, then I'm going to tack it down with a towel now and for the rest of the more encrusted stuff I'm going to use some uh, brake cleaner with a paper towel. Now that the engine bay is looking a tiny bit cleaner, I can put back the hood and then uh, not worry about all this rust anymore. Jokes aside, this will get treated in a later episode, but as of now I just want to have the car back outside and uh, it's raining a lot so having the hood on will probably help me stay out of trouble. But yeah, as of today I got the car insured and registered, I even have the plates. So, if the weather plays with me, uh, we can finally go for our first test drive. Uh, I think I'm going to drain all the old oil, do an oil change, and uh, I think then we're set to go. Oh, the downpipe is still open, so I'll also need to fix that, because the car is so loud and stinks so much. Uh, I don't even think I can go 5 kilometers without passing out, so that will need addressing. On to that in the next episode. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe to not miss any future uploads. See ya!